Uh, let me say this first. Um, it's been a, a tremendous pleasure to get to represent my alma mater uh, and really, really uh, an incredible honor. I'm very thankful to Dr. Upham and, and Bubba when they hired me four years ago and gave me that opportunity. I know it was kind of out of left field. Uh, I feel like we've uh, done some things to improve the program and I certainly know the wins and losses aren't are uh, stacked up on the other side and, and we recognize that. But uh, I'm very thankful for the opportunity and uh, I'll walk out of here with a lot of pride. Where do you think the tide turned the last two years? Uh, just the wins and losses is what I was told. Yeah. But why do you, I mean, why do you think the results change? Uh, Charlie, I, you know, I really believe that it matters, especially at a mid-major level when you don't have a mature football team. And uh, we had a void in those two classes uh, that's documented. And we didn't have very many scholarship players left in those two classes when I came. Uh, we graduated a, a really good group of seniors uh, in 2012. And we knew we would have a rebuilding year. And uh, it just has taken longer than, than we thought we thought it would. Bill, when you went into the meeting this morning mm -hmm. and they told you, did you think that it was coming or did you get a chance to explain yourself as to why you should stay here or those kind of things did you feel that that was a healthy debate no I think the clearly the decision had been made um, and you know we were already there so um, they just basically were pretty clear about it you know, when, we're gonna go another direction when you met with Derek after last year did he say that anything specifically this year needed to happen for you to keep going here no, I mean, we, we talked about the desire to move into the new conference and to, to make a difference in the new conference and to work back to get in the bowl game. There was no standard set of, you know, do this or else. I mean, it was, uh, frankly, in all the discussions I've had with Derek, there's been a pretty clear understanding of, of uh, the youth of this team and the things that we faced, the, some of the obstacles. But, I mean, this is a win-loss business. It always has been. And... Uh, that is the only explanation I was given, that, and I believe that's the case. I know, do you think this is, is really easy? Mm -hmm. Can you take us into the room with the players and kind of what you felt like you needed to tell them? Well, I think it's important to the, to, for me uh, because when you coach long enough, you, you have a lot of scenarios that come in, and uh, going into that room, there's a lot of different ways that can happen, and I, I think it was important after what I'd asked them to do all, uh, all year that they knew that I didn't quit on them that uh, uh, they, you know, I didn't, I wasn't leaving. Uh, this was uh, uh, a deal where I didn't have the opportunity to stay any longer. And I, that's what I wanted them to understand, that I had my heart and soul in this, and that didn't change. Uh, this is, there's a business side to this, and that, you know, we have to all understand that. It's uh, no different than me having to choose between a player, uh, two guys that have to play. Uh, there's a business side to what we do, but, uh, the big point I had to make to them was this was uh, this it was important for me to know that they knew that I didn't choose this. When you look back at your, your four seasons here, any regrets or do you say I gave it 100 percent? You know, I did everything I could. And this oh, is lots of that. lots of regrets. I mean, you know, every time you walk off that field and you don't uh, get the W, there's regrets. Um, I regret, uh, you know, not investing more in every player here, but I don't really believe I could have. I think I did everything we could do. Um, you know, I, I, I feel very confident that we were doing it the right way. We changed some things and really believed in doing it a, a, a certain way, and this university embraced that, and we were trying to, to live up to that. But it's, uh, we, have some, we have some obstacles here, you know, but we know what they are, and, and I embraced that when I took the job. And uh, that, those things will remain because we're a very proud academic institution, and we're going to always be that way. And I, I don't hide from that, nor should we. Has this decision soured you on college coaching in any way? <laughs> do you, what do you do from now? Do you look for a, another coaching job in college, or would you be uh, okay with going back to maybe the high school game or, or whatever? Because coaching is in your blood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think I've coached my last game yet. Sorry, I've got to turn off my... I forgot to do that. Uh, I don't think I've coached my last game. I hope I haven't. You know, I hope I get the opportunity. Um, you know, at what level? I don't know. I, I'm certainly going to explore opportunities at this level. I've enjoyed it tremendously. I, 
one of the reasons I came to college was because I wanted to work with college-age youngsters. I think it's still the most powerful uh, opportunity you have to help mold into them some at some really uh, critical times in their lives, some, some choices of manhood. And so we're going to continue to try to do that if we get the opportunity and, um, you know, whether it be at uh, college or high school or junior high, you know, I hope to keep coaching for a while. Well, not only for you, but also the Brent guys and your son and, mm -hmm. and Denver Johnson and those kind of things. What, how do you put all of that in perspective as far as what has occurred today? Well, the heartbreak for me, honestly, and it's, it's uh, just so much different for a head coach because, you know, the, maybe the notoriety is here, but, uh, you know, I have a contract and I'm treated fairly, but the bulk of that staff will walk away here as they do at most universities, you know, just unemployed. And that's what hurts for me because they come and hook up with you. And uh, those are real families. Those are real people. And I think sometimes people point at the head coach and they want to change and they do all that. And, and I totally understand that. But I think lost in that is the reality of real families that are uh, connected here. And I mean, probably if this is the average place, this will be another, besides me, probably 15 to 18 families that will be affected. As it stands right now, is this university in a position with the support for the football program to get better, to compete in this conference, and all of those things? Do you think the, the support is there? Well, that's a great question, Al. I think that uh, what I hope is that this will be the catalyst for that. Um, I think that there's an opportunity, you know, if, if uh, we step up in a lot of ways to invest in this program. But there's, uh, there is a, a, a significant... Um, I don't know what the, what the word is, but we took a significant step when we moved from Conference USA to the American Conference in terms of what we have to offer our, our players and our students and our athletes and the resources and what it takes to, I think, be competitive. And I'm hoping that, that again, this will be the catalyst for that change because I, I love this university. I want it to be successful. I care about the players that are still in this room and, and on this team. And, uh, you know, I... I I know they're going to be successful. I just hope that we'll do it well for them. What would those changes be? Well, just invest. I mean, you know, there are just there are plenty of things that that uh, we can do to just raise the level here. And uh, you know, number one, we've talked about it for a long time. That one of the hardest things about the University of Tulsa is that across the board in our athletic program, we've been very successful without a lot of the same resources that we compete against. And that's okay. I mean, we've taken a lot of pride in that. But that gap is getting bigger and bigger, and I just think that's the kind of thing that hopefully uh, people will realize that there are some, some gaps in the resources. Can you elaborate on the academic side of, of recruiting? People talk about that, but since you've gone through it now as a coach, can you kind of put into perspective the challenges of that at a school like this? Well. It's just this is a, a school where the average ACT score for the freshman class is 29. The one out of nine students is a National Merit Scholar. We're proud of that. That's exciting. We are able to recruit players here because of that. But by the same token, that's a tough environment. And so it's, uh, it's just different. And, and we felt like we found a profile of youngster that, that can fit in here and do very well. Um, but that's got to be found on a regular basis. And to get those people, I think you've got to expand the recruiting base. and You've got to expand the opportunity. Uh, those, those kids are out there, but they're not around every corner. With those limitations in mind, are, do you think you got a fair shake as a head coach here? Oh, yeah. Fair is, is all relative. You know, fair is uh, an opportunity is what I got. There, there is nothing. That, that was the wonderful thing about getting to be the head coach here is – I didn't have blinders on. I knew what we. I, I knew this place warts and all, and I still love this place warts and all. Uh, and I think sometimes that's uh, lost on people when you're going into a, a, a place that is unique. I mean, we were we're not going to change. We're going to be the smallest enrollment in Division One football. That's not going to change. And so uh, we've got to learn to embrace that and and you know do everything we can. And we've had a lot of good years doing it. It's just. It's difficult to sustain. What's the biggest lesson you take away from all of this? Um, athletics continues to be, competitive athletics continues to be a fickle business. I mean, it's a great profession, but it's a, it's a, 
It's a pretty crappy business, and we knew that. And again, I, y'all, I've, I've quoted this before. It's not about me. Uh, I remember in the playoffs last year, I, I am a huge KD fan. And when the I- MVP of the NBA, that means he's probably the best of the best of the best. He's trouble in the series, and he like a big hole in the monster. That's the nature of the Somebody will take this and continue on it. I, I really believe that. Bill, Bill, considering what's happened the last 12 years and all the success this program's had, it seems like the T's kind of turned the corner a little bit here, that this isn't the norm. You, you all have been more used to winning. Are you pretty confident that T's on the right track and has been now for 10, 12 years, that football is important around here again? Because at one time it wasn't. Mm-hmm. More so. More so, I do believe that. I, I think there's still a, um, I still think there's a, a gap in uh, the reality of what it takes to, to be a top-notch football program and what we want and hope to be able to do because we've had some success here. And uh, the, the gap is broadening. It's not getting narrower. Bill, not, there's not many times where a guy – who's just lost his job, is willing to do an interview in front of, you know, yeah. your alma mater's background or whatever. But do you feel you will have a hard time going to the next TU football game? Well, I'll have a hard time sitting in the stands because I have any time. I mean, I, you know, watching my kids or whatever it was, I, I'm just not comfortable up there. Uh, I'm going to follow these guys. There's no question. I don't, I don't leave here with anger or hurt feelings. I'm, I was given an opportunity. Uh, I think we did a lot of things that are, are left behind the scenes that are very positive for this program. Uh, I know we failed in terms of the one loss record in the last two years. You, nobody has to point that out to me. So I get it. I'm a big boy. I understand how that works. You talked about the fickleness of the whole profession, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you go as far to say that some of the expectations are unrealistic here? Here? Mm-hmm. No, I think part of one of the things that makes us great is we probably have mild expectations. I think we uh, have high, high expectations for uh, the reality. Uh, but look, where do you want to go where the expectations are too low? I mean, where do you, what job do you want to have that, you know, they're like, okay, you can, you can really, if you'll just kind of be average, it'll be all right, you know, it'll be okay. Um, so I, I don't have a problem with that. I think it's Interesting around college football, it, you know, you can get fired for winning nine or ten games, but you can also get fired for winning two games. So, you know, there's a lot to this, and and I get it. Um, again, I, I I'm just I'm pleased that I got the chance. I'm very honored to have done it. But, um, you know, I wasn't I wasn't ready to be through. <laughs>